you want to grow your booty? <laughs> like I do? <laughs> well, then you're at the right place because that's what we're going to be doing today. Well is going to take us through yes. an awesome booty day. And this is a really hard area to grow, but yeah. he has all the coolest tips and tricks. I'm going to try to break it down. It's easy for you guys to understand so that you can go and set up the perfect booty day for you as well. And if you're new to this, it'll be a really easy way to kind of figure out what works, why we do it, how it's going to feel, what to look for and hopefully get you guys some great results. I'm excited. I I'm think excited we should just well. get into it. My right, body's like go. ready to go. Okay guys, this is what I usually film on. Things are getting pro. Wait, this is the camera I should talk to. <laughs> Change your plans. The music's too loud, so we're gonna go to Pac City's gym. The machines here though are so sick. It's a little sad. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed we don't get to use them, but it's okay. We're gonna get to show you how to do it if you don't have access yeah. to all these cool machines. So we're doing the gym in here. We're just gonna be using this stuff you see right here. So it's really easy to do at your local gym. You don't have to take up a lot of space. If you have access to just limited equipment, you can do this even in an apartment or home gym. So you've got no excuses. We're gonna show you how to do this today, what to be thinking, and uh, how to get the most out of just the bare minimum. I'm ready. Let's do I'm it. I'm excited. First, we gotta talk about these shoes. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> to bring shoes to weightlifting. So can we just laugh it out and then we're gonna move on? Oh, I could train with my socks. Would yeah. you recommend that to people? Honestly, actually? barefoot. If you're, you know, doing it safe and you're not worried about landing the weight on your toe, you've got a little experience. It is actually better to train barefoot. You're gonna be able to grip the ground better. I love there that. You, go. Right. you just saved me <laughs> from having to look at these elephant uh, feet all day. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. If you think you're gonna like this video and you like a good booty, you should like, subscribe, and follow Will. All right, so right off the bat, the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna warm up with dynamic movement. So a lot of people warm up with stretching. That's not actually the best thing to do. You don't wanna lull your muscle into kind of that relaxed state right before you're gonna do heavy movements, especially if you're hitting the weights. What you wanna do is you wanna warm it up through movement. So we're gonna do just some very simple movements to get some blood into your legs, into your glutes, so that you feel more comfortable and warmed up when we start lifting the weights. We're gonna do Bulgarian split squats. So we're just pumping and stretching 10 to 12 reps here, and you're gonna do it on both legs. Perfect, you can see the pernilla, she drives her knee all the way back towards the bench and back up. So this is gonna be our first movement. We put this movement first because it's the most glute dominant. And since that's what we're trying to build, we wanna give it our most focus we have, which is gonna be at the beginning of the workout. We're fresh, we have all our energy. We wanna put all that energy right here so that it grows. So this is a hip thrust. We're set up on a Smith machine right now with a bench just outside of the Smith machine. What we're gonna do is have the bar nice and low here. Pernilla's gonna sit down. She's gonna put her shoulders right on the back of this pad. And then using that tripod foot we talk about, she's gonna press up so that her back's up on here and she's flat. Now you can see this bar lands right below her pelvic bone. What you wanna do is keep your chin tucked as she's doing right here and press up towards the top of the movement. And notice at the top here, she's in this straight line. She doesn't have to go any higher. You only wanna go as high as you can squeeze your glutes and then she'll lower it back down. Boom, that's a perfect hip thrust. Pernilla's knees, they're at a perfect 90 degree angle. So she is not too far forward. Her knees are in her feet aren't too far back. So you want that nice straight line in the shin. That's gonna allow you to press the hardest and it's gonna allow those glutes to contract the hardest. And then notice how she's pausing at the top. That's very important. We're not here to move weight. We're here to contract your glute. Moving throughout this movement, you wanna lower the weight slowly. You wanna control it on the way up. You shouldn't get too caught up in how much weight you're moving. You should be more focused on how well and controlled you're moving that weight. That's gonna get you the most results. For me, it's really helped starting with lower weight and then slowly building that muscle line connection. And then the more you're able to actually squeeze and focus on your glutes as you're doing it, I think you can start putting on more weight. Absolutely. Should we put a little bit more weight yeah, on? Yeah, I think so. Maybe. Do another 45? Yeah. Even with this heavier weight, Pernilla is completing these reps under full control. If you ever get to a point where you feel like you can't control it at this speed, then that's probably a good place to stop or even lighten the weight a little bit. You'll be surprised how much results you'll get from actually doing lighter weight with better form, as opposed to trying to add more and more weight when you can't quite control it yet. But another thing too is notice how your knees stay in place. If those knees were to cave in, you'd also want to lower the weight. The knees tend to cave in when the weight's too heavy. So if you're able to keep your knees pressed out to the side like this, that's a good sign that this is a weight you can control. You can spend a little extra time at the bottom to catch your breath before really trying to squeeze out those last few. It'll give you a little time to rest and you want to breathe throughout these movements. <laughs> Feeling it a little bit. Oh, I love it. Try love it. a little booty burn. I'll try you one. Try it. Go for one rep. 
I have been able to in the past that I could do three plates, but I haven't been doing that lately. And you, you lose that so quick. Oh, easy. <sighs> Making me look weak. Nice, look at that, even with this weight, that's good control at the top. So this is a true heavy set for Pranilla. It's tough to control, but she's still managing <sighs> to squeeze and hold it. <laughs> Come on, you got two more, you're gonna get five. Really? And then it's about encouraging yourself, exactly. saying, I got this, I got this. Now, if you have a regular barbell, that's obviously amazing. At this gym, we don't, we just have a Smith machine. You can also do it with dumbbells. You yep. can do hip thrusts in so many ways, and you're saying yeah. they can do these at home too. So, up next, we are going to have a shoulder width barbell squat. Then we're going to do something called a compound set. So we're going to be working with this barbell for the first couple of reps. And then when we're finished with that, we're actually gonna switch and continue the set using a dumbbell, which I'll show you in a second to do a goblet squat. So notice how Pernilla, she tucks her elbows and you can see her back muscles. Pernilla has amazing back muscles. You can see when she tucks her back, it forms a Ooh, little bit of a shelf right them. here. <laughs> so that's where she rests the bar. Again, if that's uncomfortable, you can also put a towel back here. The more you practice this, the more comfortable this will become. She has her elbows tucked, makes her back nice and tight. When we come down to the bottom here, you just wanna to come to about 90 degrees. If you can go lower, that's cool. You don't have to if you don't want to. Bringing your knee to about a 90 degree angle is gonna get you the full flexion in your quadriceps and in your glutes. Awesome. Without taking a rest, we're gonna have her move right into goblet squats. So using a dumbbell, we're gonna do this. The easiest way to get into this, have your dumbbell like this on a bench. It's gonna allow you to lean down and grab it with the under part of your palms, stand up, and you can see a nice wide stance. You can even point your toes out to the side a little bit more. There we go, yep. And notice how her back's very upright. That's what we're aiming for. If you bend over too much, it's gonna change the tension to the back part of your leg, where having it here, it actually puts it more on your glutes. Since we're trying to build a booty today, that's what we wanna focus on. And again, like every movement we've been doing, very slow and controlled. She's very intentional with coming down, a little pause, back up and squeezing. And that's a big thing that you might not be able to see on camera, but when you're in person here, I can see it. She's almost shaking a little bit at the top because she's not resting here. At the very top here, squeezing as hard as she can with her glutes and then going right back down. And that's where a lot of that growth comes from. It's not from trying to escape the tension, it's trying to get as much of it as you can into one set. So Will just explained that we should do 12 reps, or that's not what he explained. He explained <laughs> that we should do eight reps, but we should use the weight that we would normally use for 12 reps so that it's super controlled. And I really like that because I do think that we can actually get so much more out of doing our movements a lot more controlled instead of adding too much weight or adding too many reps. Just focusing, squeezing every single rep. Okay. Nice. Good job. Nice. I feel like I actually could have gone a little bit heavier. I wasn't at the point of complete failure. How do you feel about failing? Is I that, think definitely you want to fail. For this one, because we're doing two, I'd rather have you fail on the second part of it because if you fail, then you have to go do another movement, your legs are gonna be super shaky. So it's a right. little bit okay. a little bit easier to fail on this part yeah. now. And then you can adjust that dumbbell weight. So if this feels light on our next set, we'll up it a little bit so that it's it really does a challenge. Feel a little light, yeah. If that ever happens to you, if you're starting with a weight and it feels a little bit light, we can add in a couple things to make it more intense. So at the bottom here, I want you to pause for two seconds. Good, yeah, and then up. And I want you to slowly lower to the bottom, counting to four. So when you start at the top, we're gonna go down, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, then hold. And now up and squeeze for two seconds at the top. One, two. This is gonna add more tension oh, with the yeah, same I amount of weight. That. If yeah. we can keep that momentum, perfect. One, two, up. One, two. Good, back down. One, two, three, four, a little slower. Good, one, two. Nice, this little change to tempo here, it's gonna get way more out of this lighter weight than we thought. And it's actually nicer because you're activating more of the muscles and less of your ligaments and joints, so you'll feel better after the workout. And I feel like doing things like this is what helps you build that mind muscle. Exactly, connection. you'll start feeling muscles yeah. in here that you never knew you had. And you wouldn't if you were moving too fast. The only thing for me with these goblets is that my arms will get tired quicker than my legs. And a nice way to get around that, you can, hold the dumbbell like this. The only difference here is gonna be in your upper torso. So in the goblet squats, we're up here. As you can see from the side, I'm very straight. With these, I'm a little more bent over, so it's a little bit more like a deadlift, but it's gonna work the same muscle group. 15 pounds? Yeah, I think we went from 40, so 15 pounds, that's a good jump. Yeah. 
just do another set and then... Yeah, let's do one more set. I'll spot you on this one as well. I think you did like 10 reps last time. So it did, I wouldn't say it felt light, but it felt like I could do a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. Then I would spend a little extra time in that bottom position just to stretch it yeah. and come back up. Okay. That time at a full stretch, it's going to get more muscle damage. A little known fact, most of your growth is actually going to come from lowering the weight, not raising it. That's where most of the muscle damage is done. Oh, I didn't know the, that. Yeah, where most of the uh, growth comes from. So the slower and more controlled you are in lowering the weight, the more damage you'll do, which means the more it will recover, aka grow. So doing these little counts in your head, it helps you control the weight more and get more out of the workout. better yeah that's yeah. good yeah the slower you go the better so split squats can be super intimidating and just like challenging in many ways i hear so many people talk about this but will just showed me a cool technique you hold on to the smith machine here and then you have the dumbbell in your hand it'll help you stay stable it feels really good i know a lot of people have such a love hate relationship to the Bulgarian split squats, but usually I feel like it's the it's the exercises that we want to do the least that we really can benefit from the most. So we kind of keep doing them. They feel challenging. Exactly. <laughs> You'll only get better and more comfortable. And then another pro tip, if your grip is giving out a little bit, you can adjust this dumbbell so that it's like this on your leg. And as you go down and back, pulling that into your leg a little bit, it's going to actually kind of help stabilize the dumbbell. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if ever you feel like your grip's getting out, you can just adjust it like that. Another thing you want to notice here is notice how when Pranilla's at the top, she's not necessarily locking out her knee. That's because she's actually focusing very hard on squeezing her glute. So when you squeeze your glute, that doesn't mean your knee actually has to lock out. So you'll notice that even her torso is moving backwards. You want to think about putting your glutes right back here on this pad and they'll shift back this way, which allows you to actually drive out of that glute more. If you were to shift forward, it would put it more on that front quad. So driving back like this, that's just going to grow the booty. I feel it for sure. <laughs> when I work out in general, I really like doing high volume, but sometimes doing workouts like this where you do less, but it's more effective. Oh, that's so helpful. Yes. Highly recommend you get a wrist strap. So they wrap around the barbell. And as you can see, that allows her hand to grip it. So even though her grip's not super tight, the pressure of her fingers against that fabric keeps the dumbbell attached to her. So she doesn't have to worry about running out of grip strength and we can focus all of this on growing the glutes. So we were gonna use the cable machine for some kickbacks, but because it's taken, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna do something to end up your workout with. So instead, we're just gonna do regular kickbacks without anything. And what really it comes down to whether it being effective or not is if you really squeeze your glutes as you're doing it. Which also means that if you don't have a cable machine, there you go, no excuses. No excuses. And you're just gonna be on all four, and then you're just gonna kick back. And I really feel that, especially because I just work the muscle. Yeah. And yes, I put on my dirty socks. <laughs> I just definitely feel it in my... Yeah, and when you notice she's kicking back, she bends her knee in and tucks it really far under to stretch. And oh, when she comes I up do. and back, <laughs> it's really straight and then like aiming for the roof. And you'll see that really bunches up the glute here. You're getting a full contraction. If you just went back, it wouldn't get as much as when you go back and up. And so it's really on you to make this as hard as you can on yourself and squeeze that last little bit of energy out of your glutes. And you can use a band too. That'll make it a little bit harder if you're doing this at home and you want some extra resistance or at the gym. Yeah. And I feel like even if you want to switch it up, you can do like these, right? Exactly. And that's going to work kind of this outer side of the glute here. They call that the adductors. It's a muscle that sits on the outside of the glute. Helping build that up, it will add a little bit more width to the glute. I just want to, just for anyone who like wants to add a little bit of weight, if you're doing that, okay, this is too heavy. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, that but, oops, so sorry. much weight. But like if you're just doing these and trying to burn out your glute, you can do almost the same exactly. effect with this, right? Which yep. is adding some weight. One last thing you can do is if you put a dumbbell yes. in between your knee like this, you can't extend it, but you can come up and back. And that'll add a little bit of weight to it if you're looking to add a little bit extra resistance to finish it off. Maybe you have a little bit extra energy at the end of your workout, feeling like you can push the boundaries a little bit. You can add just a light weight to start. Make sure you get that full extension. And something I like too is doing those, but then also like making a little circuit where then you do jump squats with that. And then you just go without stopping, no rest, because that really burns out your glutes at the end. That's what you really exactly, want, right? Yeah. After any good workout, you have to do your bodybuilding we posing. Do. Oh yes. Of course. Yes. So you gotta go from the side and go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty good bicep. <laughs> and then maybe one of these. <laughs> and then one of these. <laughs> 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 Thanks 
Thank you so much for working out with me and Will today. He crushed my glutes. I hope he crushed your glutes yeah. too if you want to try out this workout. It's really good. If you're just getting into this, you're a little like, what am I going to do with my glute days? I really want to build those glutes. Yeah. This would be a fun place to start. Yeah. And you should absolutely go check out all of his channels. He is bringing out so much value in all of his you. content and really helping people build more muscle and become yeah. better versions of Every day, yourself. every day. Yeah. Yeah, definitely check it out guys and use this as a template. You know, experiment with this. Always try to have a movement where you're hip hinging, where you're squatting, and then a single leg movement. If you use those three as a template, you can never go wrong. You heard him, never go wrong. You know what else you can't go wrong with? You can't go wrong with hitting that subscribe button wow, and clicking right that into like. It. Look, it's so smooth. <laughs> so smooth, I love it. Thank you guys. See you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. Last week I shared a video with Will's wife, Maria. And here are some of our greatest takes, just to finish off this video strong. We're rolling, Will. Don't come out. <laughs> Can you give me some claps? That's to help him sync his audio between mm -hmm. the two cameras, the two microphones. Wow. So. I also now have a weird take where I can't start a video yeah, before clap. clapping clap. because like I actually no, did it. Like so I have to do like it. Yeah, it's okay. Also, you think are fun and just try it out. And I think that we'll like, we'll get so, um, oh my God. <laughs> All right, so we have gotten three super helpful tips. Number one, wait, what was number one? Uh, what was number one?